On this episode of TQA Weekly, I talk about viruses, their types, how antiviruses can help you, and why antiviruses can't remove everything from your computer. This episode of TQA Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash podcast and use the coupon code TQAWEE. My name is Steve Smith and this is TQA Weekly. If ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. Go to my website, tqaweekly.com, and use the contact form. And of course, if you are on YouTube or any other website, Leave the comments down below. And of course, today's topic is all about computer viruses, and I'm going to be explaining to you why I like talking about this kind of stuff and why I think certain people need to actually listen up to what I'm about to say. Computer viruses infect anything they want. They can infect Windows, Apple, Android, Blackberry, Linux, Unix, BSD, and any other operating system out there. I have seen many different types of codes designed to attack every single one of these operating systems. Do you want to know why? Most of these attackers actually point at Android and Windows and DOS. Very simple. Market share. Most of these malicious programmers are just as good as some of these top level market business people. They understand that if you want to make money, you need to hit the biggest, most used, most insecure platforms first. That's where you're going to make your money. That's where you need to go and point out everything. So using every single security hole, every single part of every single person's computer can be compromised if they're not updated correctly. And today's episode is going to help you understand why you should be updating as often as possible and why you need an antivirus and why it won't help. Even if you're infected an antivirus, I had to basically explain it a little bit like Japan at the end of the episode. So first, like I said, computer viruses can infect anything they want. So let's start off the most common from my youth, the boot virus. Normally infecting the MBR leverages the fact that it actually loads first, goes into memory, and can do anything it wants. It can clone itself, it can write code, it can delete stuff, it can damage drives. It is basically easy to remove if you're using a different hard drive, but various newer versions have been designed to actually divert the reader head to a different position on the hard drive. Therefore, it is hard sometimes to get rid of it. Then you have the most common, the program virus, which normally infects executable viruses. Don't be confused. Dot bin, com, exe, ovl, sys, drive, and others are actually program files, but newer image formats are also program files. So we're no longer limited to actual programs. Many other files can be infected. So anything you download must be scanned by an antivirus first. You can get these through fake torrent files, email attachments, and even on other websites. So be careful what you download and always scan everything before you open it. You have the multipartite virus type, a hybrid virus. It could be a bunch of different viruses simultaneously. Usually found in the MBR, loads into memory and then does its damage. It is basically anything that I'm gonna be talking about today mixed together. So that is basically what it is. We have stealth virus, which rootkits can be classed under that are capable of hiding themselves from operating systems and antivirus, anti-malware solutions, normally by telling the drive to go somewhere else, changing the file size, and even going as far as telling the kernel to shut up and don't tell the antivirus I'm here. Basically, they could be found, but for very specific reasons, I would tell you that if you were to find one, you probably won't be getting rid of all of it anytime soon unless you format. We have the polymorphic virus, which is an interesting virus. It is capable of updating its source code of itself on the fly. It is a type of more advanced multipartite virus that updates. It actually does things users don't do, like updating source code of its actual own operating system, normally controlled by command and control center, but some of these could be running off other types of stuff as well. We have another common virus called the macro virus, which literally pisses me off because of the way these actual programs are designed. So 
what happened is you would download this as part of an email attachment, read it, in fact, the normal template of whether your word processor or spreadsheet or any other application template that was accessible to it. And once the program was loaded with this malicious macro, it would attempt to send emails using your email client through a very, very bad hole in security that allowed you to send an email from the document creator in the first place. And this makes it possible for it to spread. It would have been easily defeated if we were to hard code the normal templates into the programs themselves. The only real ways to get rid of these, I would say is delete every template and get from a known, known clean source and then scan everything and get rid of any other, other documents that have been infected with this kind of malicious code. It is very hard to find these macro viruses, but if you do, just delete the files and start anew. Then we have the ActiveX viruses. I used to program in ActiveX. I didn't make viruses, but I can tell you one thing about it. Microsoft, you failed. You still actively support ActiveX in most of your web browsers, and I do not understand why you would leave something that can edit, change, or do anything it wants on the hard drives of users. Literally, this is pre-Flash, and we were capable of doing stuff in the computer not just in the browser, in the computer itself. It had so much power that no other browser vendor ever, ever allowed ActiveX to be part of their actual core code. So only Internet Explorer ever accepted to use this. Netscape, which was later replaced by Firefox, never allowed it to exist in that. For that, I am thankful. Best way of preventing ActiveX infections are to turn off ActiveX. And here's an easier one, never use Internet Explorer, period. That is very simple. You have browser hijacking viruses that infect the browser, cause undesirable functioning such as changing the start page, routing all traffic to malicious websites, and of course can be contracted by either poisoned websites or being downloaded by the user voluntarily. I'm gonna guess by accident. Then we have ransomware and crypto viruses, which are newer kinds of viruses that actually take you ransom. They encrypt all of your personal documents on any single drive that has drive lettering, which we call hot storage. Hot storage files can be encrypted, even those in Dropbox, and this could actually force you to have to pay up. Newer versions like CryptoLocker used to ask for two bitcoins, which for going rate is about $2,000 now, even though it's not at that price they wanted it. And this meant that you would literally be held hostage for documents. Some businesses have been hit by it. And of course it was cheaper for them to just pay up and get their documents back. But if you have backups and they're not connected and they're not infected, format the drive and start anew because that is too expensive to be trying to deal with. Now, of course, web scripting viruses. At the time, I would have said, you know what, don't worry about it. Most search engines can figure this out for you and tell you, no, this is not true anymore. We use web 2.0, even I have Ajax on my website. It's not that hard to detect. And I mean, like I played all around with the idea of detecting various bots going through my old website. And you know what, I was able to see where they were going and how they were trying to access stuff. So it is so easy to detect them that you could actually just flag them and have the code not load when they're present. Use no script or not script, blacklist everything and only whitelist websites. The web, the entire internet will break like this. Okay, don't worry about it. It will break when you do that, but you will be safer. A few things you should also consider concern yourself with is most viruses are contracted by visiting websites of a doubtful nature, attachments and emails, and pirating downloaded material. 25% of most torrents last time I checked were illegitimate. So be careful if you're going to download something illegal, not that I condone it, just make sure you download from the correct places. So make sure you don't open emails, scan all downloaded files before opening, use no script or not script, and just be careful on the internet. And if you were wondering why you can't use an antivirus, well, here is my Japan idea, okay? So you can have a Tsunami alert system around an island to tell you a big ass wave is coming to get you. But those 
indicators only tell you the wave's coming. They don't stop it. An antivirus now is much like these buoys. So you know you're infected, you know you're screwed. Format and restart. Make sure you use cold storage and of course, make sure you subscribe if you like the show. And of course, this show couldn't be made possible unless I had sponsors, so my sponsor of today is ProXPN. Now more than ever, your online freedom and privacy are under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you can or cannot see while keeping a detailed record of everything you do. Plus that free Wi-Fi at the coffee house or airport terminal is putting you at risk because your passwords and sensitive data can be intercepted more easily than you might think. ProXPN is a global VPN that works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel to which all of your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser file file sharing, email, instant, instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, disguising your physical location, and giving you unfeathered access to any website or online service no matter where you live or travel to. Complete online privacy with 2048-bit encryption, 512-bit encryption key, works with OpenVPN or PPTP, helps protect you against the ISP six strikes rule in the United States, bypasses internet filtering, blocked websites, geographical restrictions for internet content, and online video worldwide with servers in US, UK, Asia, and more, and are more always coming. ProXPN software has works with Windows and Macs, offering advanced controls, allowing you to select the programs you and ports you want to anonymously root through ProXPN servers. And he also works with iOS and Android devices, allowing you to use your data plan or public corporate Wi-Fi with complete and total privacy on the go. No app required, even though Apple and Android now have apps for them and 24 seven customer support. All you need to do to support the show is to go to proxpn.com slash podcast for more information to sign up. Yes, they have a free version, but if you want to do all the really cool stuff like downloading torrents, TQA Weekly watchers and listeners also get a free 30-day risk-free trial. Remember to visit ProXPN.com and sign up with the coupon code TQAWEE. What does that do? Well, ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month if you pay per month or $74.95 for the entire year. We have a special offer for you. You receive 20% off for using the coupon code TQAWEE. That comes down to about, you know, almost five or six bucks a month instead, and you get unlimited stuff like getting your torrents from the correct places. Have a great day. Remember to subscribe. Thank you for listening. Bye.